Welcome to this video. This is an engine that I built in a CAD program that I'd like to use to demonstrate on how a car engine works. So what I'm going to do is model and show you the very basic components of an engine and then I'll show you how they're put together and how they work together to make an engine run and then I'll return to this model and show you how it all works. So let's get started. I'm going to start off by making an engine block which is the foundation of an engine if you will. It provides placement for all of the internal and moving parts. I'll model that very quickly. Well, this is one of the most simple kinds of engine block that you can have. Uh, let's move on and see what another basic engine component looks like, the piston. Okay, this is an example of a piston. This is used in an engine to harness the power of the fuel to make the car go. It's a, one of the most fundamental components you can have in an engine. And we'll see how that works in a bit. Let's see another component, the crankshaft. Okay, this is a crankshaft. This is a shaft that spins around in circles and that spinning motion is what eventually makes your tires turn round and round. So this is another very fundamental important part of an engine. And we'll see how that works. Let's look at a connecting rod. Okay, this is a simple example of a connecting rod. Uh, this is also a very important part of the engine, and we'll see how all this goes together. Let's put together a simple engine. Okay, so here I have my simple engine block, and I'm going to insert my piston, and I'll insert the connecting rod. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the connecting rod inside of the piston. Okay, now with this connecting rod and the piston, I'm going to put a pin through the piston to keep the connecting rod inside the piston. Okay, so now that I have a piston and my rod set up, I can have this rod swing freely under the piston like a pendulum on a clock. And I'm going to put this piston into this engine block. So now my piston fits right inside of this engine block, and the rod can swing back and forth freely. I'll then insert my crankshaft. Okay, now with my engine block transparent, I'm going to put this connecting rod end on the, over the crankshaft. Okay, so now as you can see, the, as the piston moves up and down, the crankshaft spins in circles. Now the piston moving up and down is what ultimately generates the spinning force on your tires. Let's have a look at the big engine model and see what makes the piston move up and down. This is the engine. I'm going to take a section view to make it more easy to understand. I'll show only one piston for now. This is a cutaway view of the engine and just as before you can see the engine block that surrounds the piston, connecting rod, and crankshaft. It's important to know that the piston seals inside of that engine block so that as it moves up and down it's a sealed surface that's moving up and down. This, uh, this thing on top is called the cylinder head and this channels air and fuel into the engine block and it channels exhaust out of the engine block. You'll also notice that it has some valves so the cylinder head channels the gases flowing in and out of the engine and it has these two valves that it locates. I'm going to, for better visualization, hide the engine block and then you'll notice that uh, the cylinder head seals on top of the engine block so that when the piston moves downward some valves open and then the other valves open and the valves open as a pattern. What's going on here is as the piston moves downward the valves that are responsible for fuel and air begin to open and since everything is sealed the piston will pull in all of this fuel and air. Notice 
When the piston reaches the bottom, the valves close. And since the valves are closed, all that fuel and air has nowhere to go, so the piston compresses all of that fuel and air, and then a spark plug ignites and burns this fuel and air. And this burn pushes the piston down. And that's where all the engine gets its power from. Well, now there's a whole bunch of exhaust because we just burned a bunch of fuel and air. So the exhaust valves open and the piston pushes the exhaust out. Finally, since all the exhaust is out, we can pull in fresh air and fuel. The valves close, compression, and then the fuel is burned and the exhaust is pushed out. You may be wondering what makes the valves open and close, and that is a shaft called the camshaft. I'll go ahead and show the camshaft. Some engines have one camshaft, some engines have two camshafts, but this is a shaft that has an egg-like lobe, and if you watch the end of this lobe, it will make contact with the valve and push it open and closed. So the camshaft opens and closes the valves, and different characteristics of the engine can be brought out by making the lobes on the camshaft different. That makes the, the lobes on the camshaft control the amount of time that the valve stays open and how high or low the valve will lift. And these things can change the way that the engine runs by changing the camshaft. Now, one piston can produce a decent amount of power, but most cars, at least the vast majority of production cars, have at least four pistons or more. This is a straight six. In other words, this engine will have six pistons all in one row. I'll go ahead and hide this cylinder head. So you can see that all these pistons uh, can fire at different times and each valve is timed for every piston. This engine is known as a straight six as it has six pistons all in one row. A straight four, which is in a lot of production cars, simply has four pistons in one row. Now you've probably heard of a V engine before, especially the popular V8. I'll open up an example of that. So this is a V8, and I didn't spend very much time making this. This is just a simple example. This is what the block would look like. As you can see the pistons, there's eight pistons, hence the V8, and they're in a V pattern. The V8 uh, will look something like this when it's running. I think it's very fun to watch. The advantage to this configuration is that it saves a lot of space. The engine isn't overly tall, and it's not too long. The straight six is quite a long engine. So you can fit eight pistons in a pretty compact area by using the V configuration, and that's one of the main advantages. The V engines tend to have a little more power. The straight engines, like the straight six, tend to have more torque. So it's also a, a preference of what you want to use the engine for as well. I'm going to be posting some follow-up videos on some of the details of the components like pistons and blocks and camshafts and how they're all designed and how you can have a deeper look into how all of this works and what it all means. So uh, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. It's the best way to help me back and I'll catch you next time.